Greetings, everyone, and welcome to No BS Baking. You got JP here now. As you can tell, I'm back in Canada spending some quality time with friends and family. But while I've been here, I got a message from an individual that had gone through one of my videos on ratio and proportion and how to calculate stuff. Now, he said I went through it way too quickly and he couldn't understand any of it. Now, ratio and proportion is one of those critical mathematical um, uh, processes that's used significantly in baking and cooking. It's very important, but it's not, not just is understanding the math very important, but understanding the places within the baking process that a little math could really make the difference between mediocre bread and awesome bread. So today I want to slow down, dive into some of the most common calculations and the areas that every baker should know uh, uh, where you should do that little tiny bit of math. So without further ado, let's go. Now when it comes to math, baking is full of it and no other place in the entire baking process is this more true than the recipe. I mean, you can wing it like this person and eventually you should get things sorted out, but be rest assured that the math in a recipe is sound, your chances of failure is next to zero. So when you look at the recipe for the first time, it may look like this. Can you just make it and hope for the best? Of course you can. But a professional baker would want to know a bit more before starting. First, he would want to see everything expressed as a weight in ounces or preferably grams. He would then want to know what percent of the total flour weight all the ingredients translated into as a percentage of flour. He would definitely be interested in the total weight of the recipe or the batch weight to confirm the amount of dough this recipe provided. Then the baker will review the scaling weight or the amount of dough the loaf, loaf or loaves will weigh based on the author's recipe and may opt to increase or decrease the recipe batch weight to work better for his pan size or yield objectives. Bakers also want a perfect final dough temperature, so they will factor the optimum water temperature to use to achieve this goal based on their mixing process and, of course, environmental conditions. So the first bit of math I recommend is to convert the recipe to weights using Google or whatever you prefer. If you prefer, you can convert the entire recipe to ounces, however grams are more precise. Once the weights are confirmed, you can quickly calculate the percentages in baker's percent. Flour is always 100%, so we know already that 600 grams equals 100%. This is placed on the top of our grid as shown. Then it's just a matter of taking all the additional ingredient weights one by one, placing these numbers here, and then doing some simple math to see each of the ingredients expressed in baker's percent. So just to be thorough, we take the weight of the salt, multiply it by 100, and divide it by the weight of the flour in, in the recipe, which is 600. So the answer is 1.16%, rounded to 1%. The exact same process for the other ingredients, including water, and the recipe is now expressed in baker's percent using simple ratio and proportion. Baker's percent is crucial for understanding a recipe's performance and considering a potential issues that may not quickly be noticed when using volumetric measures, such as water in this recipe noted at 100%. Now I've covered baker's percent extensively in my videos, so let's move on to the next important math consideration for bakers. As I've stated many times in my videos, final dough temperature after mixing is critical in bread making. Determining the ideal water temperature to use can often be daunting and depends on the mixing process you will use. As an example, whether it's no knead, your hand kneading, or it's mechanical mixing. Now additionally, the time you plan to mix or knead will also be a factor as well as the temperature of your kitchen and ingredients. Now you can obviously wing it. However, keep in mind that adding warm water like many online recipes recommend can work fine for room temperature environments. However, they may be a complete disaster during the summer months or in warmer climates. Now, this is the reason bakers will most always do a calculation for determining the temperature of the water they will use. 
Now for this example, we want a final dough temperature of 78 or 26 degrees Celsius and have three factors we'll work into the math. Flour temperature, room temperature, and friction factor. So in this example, the math is three times the desired dough temperature, minus the flour temperature, minus the room temperature, minus the friction factor, which I use 20 as a ballpark. Now, three times is due to the number of factors we have in the calculation. If you're adding an additional factor, such as, say, the temperature of a high addition preferment, then four times the DDT would be used. Three factors, multiply by three. Four factors, multiply by four. And the net result is 64 degrees Fahrenheit, which is the desired water temperature for this example. If you want simple answers, quick and precise, the baking assistant takes this general water temperature approximation to the next level by factoring the mix time you plan, as well as providing results for both hand kneading and no knead bread processes. No weight to pan capacity is always considered by professional bakers, yet rarely even mentioned in home baking circles. Home bakers find a recipe, they make the dough, and they put it in the bread pan they have. Now, many home bakers often wonder, why is my bread so dense? Is it underproofed? Is it undermixed? Or what? It could be, but it could be just as simple as the dough weight to pan capacity. So let's look at this. So the first thing we need to do is calculate the capacity of your pan. If it's square or rectangle pan, the calculation is simple. Length times width times height. If you measure in inches, there's a bit more of math that need, you need to do. However, if you measure in centimeters, you're basically done after the first measure. For ease and time constraints, let's just do this in centimeters. So as a standard 9 by 5 by 2 and 3 quarter inch pan, this translates into around 23 by 13 by 7 centimeters. This turns into 2,032 centimeters which is exactly the capacity in grams. So now let's put the pan capacity over here and take another look at the recipe we had earlier. So the batch weight for the recipe is around 1290 grams. So let's set up our ratio and proportion grid again and do the math. So if we take the batch weight around 1290 grams times 100 divided by 2032, we can see that 63.5% is the dough weight to pan capacity. As a general rule, as the amount of white flour in a recipe is decreased, the dough weight is generally increased. If you are trying to calculate the capacity of a round pan, you can definitely do a bit more math and figure all this stuff out. Or you can simply fill, in the, fill the pan with water, determine the weight of the water in grams, and voila! you got a close approximation of your pan capacity. You can do the same thing with Banneton baskets. Just line them with a plastic bag, fill them with water to the top, and now you know your basket capacity. So you can run through the calculations or you can use the Baking Assistant calculator, which with a few quick inputs using pan dimensions in inches or centimeters, you can quickly determine the pan capacity the dough weight to pan capacity percent, and make any adjustments to this percentage you want and have it tell you the exact amount of dough you need. Now the assistant comes with some base guidelines for quick and easy reference also. And then we got the folks dealing with round pans, common for pizza and cakes. This calculator is perfect for scaling recipes to fit different size pans or just determining the perfect amount of dough or batter weight you need for your pan to give you the results you want every time. Now, what is so important about this? Why do I need to think about it? And what can I use this for? Now, as I've stated, there is no rule for how much dough you should or shouldn't use in a particular pan. However, there are common guidelines as I listed below. By working out what the author is using for dough weight, you can gain an understanding of the characteristics you can expect based on the dough's hydration, process used, and where it falls with respect to the guide.
No matter what dough weight you decide to use, the idea is to have the dough proof to peak. When too much dough is in your pan, the chances of underproofing increase substantially, resulting in a much denser bread. Likewise, if you allow the dough to reach peak, it may become too large, often overflowing the lip of the pan. Now, I see this many times where people complain that the recipe produced a dense, finished product, wondering what they did wrong. However, many times, this is just as simple as adjusting dough weight to pan capacity and assuring your dough has reached peak during the proofing stage. So let's use the previous numbers of 2032 for pan capacity and 1290 for batch weight. So our dough weight to pan capacity was 63.5%. Now let's convert this recipe batch weight to the amount of dough we need if we want to reduce our dough weight to 50% of our pan capacity. So the first thing that we will do is convert this recipe to true percent. So let's take out baker's percent to keep things organized. In this instance, the total batch weight is 1294, so we set up our grid to express this as 100%. So then we take our flour weight times 100 divided by 1294, and we get 46.37. So flour is 46.37% of the total weight of the dough. We do the same calculation for all ingredients, and now we know the recipe in true percent. Now let's combine the dough weight we want. We want 50% dough weight to pan capacity, so we do the math, and 1016 is our new desired batch weight. So now we have to adjust the recipe. So we have the new batch weight, and we know the true percent of the original recipe, so now it's just a matter of using the exact same percentages with the new batch weight, doing a little math as shown, and each ingredient is scaled to meet the dough requirements. By understanding how to calculate your dough or batter weight per pan capacity, you can easily determine the dough or batter weight the author is using, adjust batch sizes for the characteristics you want, or simply use the author's exact pan capacity percent for scaling a recipe to fit another pan. Now, this on the surface may seem unimportant. However, this is a common question you see online, especially when folks want to adjust a cake recipe for a smaller, larger pan or irregular shape or size. Well, the next video will be a continuation of common calculations that I see folks often ask about. And these include, if my bread's too fast or slow, how much yeast should I add or cut to achieve a desired proof time? If I add eggs, what adjustments do I need to consider in a recipe? How to increase flour protein to exact percentage you want using vital wheat gluten. My flour doesn't display the protein content. How do I know what it is? And what part can I assume is gluten-forming proteins? If I add soy flour, milk powder, or other non-gluten enrichment, how much water should I add? Properly calculating water contribution for other common ingredients to ensure recipe balance and performance. Well, the Baking Assistant contains additional, more advanced calculation tools not re readily available online. But if you're serious about your baking, be sure to get the whole suite of calculators designed for precise baking and ease of use. And lastly, if there's a calculation you're interested in or a how-to question you have, be sure to put it in the comments section. If you're not the type of person that likes to sit down and work through a bunch of math before you start baking, or is prepared to go through batch after batch of problematic baking like this person, then I highly recommend checking out the Baking Assistant. Quickly and easily use the calculators to do all the critical calculations in the recipe builders to take care of all the rest of the math you need to analyze, modify, fix, and build recipes that are perfectly balanced to work with any pen. But don't take my word for it. See what people are saying about it in my online store product reviews. Or contact me for more information. Now I'm sincere when I say it will be the best investment you can ever make if you're serious about baking.